do you see any pavement? I mean, do you see any skyscrapers? Do you hear birds? I mean, do you hear water? You can't beat it. Tin Cup's an interesting place. Some areas look perfect, just like you'd like it to look, and you'd go around the corner and you'd wonder what happened. It hasn't gotten degraded to the point that we can't still bring it back. You can transcend a lot of boundaries just with uh, cooperating. Pretty much every project we work on, we work with other folks. There's so many things and so many aspects to it that we really have to have each other. I think it's good, you gotta work together. Everybody's gotta give and take a little bit to make everybody happy. Tin Cup's pretty valuable. It provides water for our stock. And my family picked this place up in the early 80s. And we've just come out here ever since I was little. I get paid by the pound for the cattle, so if we keep them on good feed, they're doing good, and it's not hard on the ground. Kind of take the time to move them around to different, different ends of it, spend the time keeping them on good grass. It's good for the land, good for the cows. I think it's a good crick. I think it's probably good that they're doing some work on it. There was a lot of, of unstable banks, but yet there was a lot of good vegetation, a lot of good willows, and there's a bunch of species here that we don't have everywhere that made this kind of unique. There's one more. There he goes. Tin Cup Creek is unique in that we have a really intact aquatic ecosystem here. We've got, um, of course, uh, native Yellowstone cutthroat trout that are genetically pure. We have northern leatherside chubs, which are a species of concern. Uh, western pearl shell mussels, boreal toads. A crayfish. Red side shiners and mountain suckers. We'll get hundreds of fish out of a, a trap sometimes. You know, so I thought, well, maybe this is a place we can do some restoration work. And we started digging in the files and digging through historical photos and started finding things that had happened up here over time. One of the things that was interest to us that we came upon was in the late 50s, this area had been sprayed. Following the aerial photos through, we could see how this stream system had unraveled in the 60s and the 70s. It turned into a braided system, multiple channels, very few willows left. You know, whether it was accidentally or not, the removal of the willows was a management action that, that affected this system. And if we can come back in and, and, and fix that action, correct that action to where we make it better again and, and re restore it to, to what it should be, I think that's a beneficial thing to do. When we were elevating these riffles in here, we're elevating them about a foot foot and a half, maybe two feet at the most, so that now it becomes accessible to the floodplain again. Which really lets this stream breathe, so to speak. The stream was really over widened, a lot of silt, not a lot of diversity of habitat that you typically need for all stages of a wild trout population to be healthy. We need good vegetation and that kind of forms the basis for the habitat. We need deep pools, we need stable banks, but without vegetation you can't have stable banks, and without stable banks you can't have deep pools. It's all related, it's good stuff. It's good for me. There's places you couldn't even cross a horse on this creek and you should be able to go through a creek pretty easy, but the banks have been set back. The way they're building it up, I think it'll help. Volunteers, they help us finish up the work that we've done. Add the nice, you know, the, the frosting, the finishing touch, you know, add those few more willows in places where you didn't get them. Just like maintaining your beautiful yard and priming it, we're doing the same thing in a natural way for the river and its natural habitat.
I like this kind of work because it's meaningful, it's fun. You can see the results. Uh, you get to work with really incredible people and partners and it's just very rewarding. That lower section three years ago, we looked at it and it was just, it was blown out, it was nasty, and I said, no, I'm not even gonna bother fishing here. Now you go down and look at it, and it's lush, it's green. It's a healthier habitat if, you know, especially if you're an angler, you can see that there are more places where you would wanna fish and where trout would be. By doing this work down here and keeping the water from just shooting through this little section of the valley, letting it stay for a while, it's gonna keep it a lot greener. The way they're going, I think they're going in the right direction, is, is my opinion. You know, we'll, time will tell. It's a rebuilt system. I, I don't know what the word restored means anymore, but we've rebuilt this system. I think it holds fantastic promise for what's going to happen here in the future. <laughs>